Alhamdulillah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim fa qala rabbukum ud'uni astaghfir lakum amin ya rabbal alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina siratal mustaqim siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil maghdubi 'alaihim waladdallin amin Allahumma ajma shamal muslimin wa kristiyan wa lumad fi madinat dabab وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تجيغ قدوبنا بعد جهلتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen Our most gracious heavenly Father We come to you today to praise and worship you And give you thanks For all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that we may in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with a prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. Ayan, magandang magandang umaga po sa ating mga viewers all over the country, our mathematics teachers and other uh, teachers around the country. Magandang magandang umaga po. Welcome to our uh, 11th episode of Casio Tech Session, sponsored, uh, spearheaded by Educational Technology Unit in partnership with Casio Calculators Philippines. And today we'll be discussing about Mathematics Investigation Webinar with the aid of Casio Computing Tools, the world by the numbers. And on this particular webinar, we will be discussing forensic science, mathematics model, 
and real-life mystery cases. To formally introduce to us our speaker and to discuss uh, something about our uh, topic this morning, let us all welcome our teacher from Tenejeros, our teacher from Tenejeros uh, National High School, a junior high school mathematics teacher, Mr. Hill John Basa. Good morning, Sir Hill John. Uh, let's wait for Sir Hill John. Uh, so I think we're just having some technical problems with Sir Hill John. So I think this is a special webinar session um, conducted by Casio Calculators and Educational Technology Unit. I think it is an adaptation of a particular webinar held in in Australia, something like that. So to formally introduce our speaker and to get to know about our topic this morning, let's all welcome back Mr. Hildion Basa. Good morning, sir. Good morning po, sir. Hindi po nakikita Hi, yung sir. camera ko. Wala po. Oh, wait lang po. Okay. So, uh, while waiting for Sir Hildyan, so I think this is our uh, 12th episode and medyo marami ang nag-aabang sa atin uh, this, uh, this morning kasi we will be having a double header uh, this day. We will be having our session with Mr. Reynaldo Torres at 10 o'clock to 12 noon and then later this afternoon at 3 p.m. we'll be having another session with Engineer JD. So, full pack at siksik liglig at nag-uumapaw na naman po ang ating ma uh, ang ating session right today and let's all welcome back Mr. Hildion Basa. Good morning. Yeah, so sir. good morning po. And <clears throat> okay, so uh, good day to all math students, math enthusiasts who are watching today. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you our presenter for this session. He finished his Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics at Polytechnic University of the Philippines. He also graduated in MA Mathematics at the National Teachers College, being a National MTAP Scholar. He is an MTAP awardee, a trainer, a writer, and speaker in different math talks. Let's all witness my idol, master, and the legendary tech teacher of Casio Philippines. So let's all welcome Mr. Reynaldo C. Torres Jr. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Hiljo. Good morning, good morning Ayan, sir. Ayan po. Um, today po, uh, I am assigned to discuss po uh, Ayun nga po, uh, ang material coming from uh, Casio, Italy. So, uh, foreign na foreign po ang ating topic. But, but since this is a reality po, no? so this is set up for real world, na lalo na yung mga stories and mga cases. So, pwede po siyang ma-apply pa rin dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, of course. Um, but before that, no? before that, no? kindly invite po yung iba, po, iba pa po nating friends lalo po yung mga math enthusiasts po natin. Kasi mamaya po, may papremyo si Sir Joel, no? pinramis niya po sa akin yun kagabi, na may, mamimigay po siya ng GCash uh, prices po. So, I think ano, uh, yung isang sinabi niya sa akin is 500 pesos yata na GCash prize. No? So, yun po. So, later, no, pag nag q na ako ng pagsagot ninyo, yung makapagbigay ng tamang sagot ay magkakaroon ng prices coming from Casio Philippines. So, yun po. So, isi-send po yung through GCash. Ayan. So, <laughs> uh, ang prices... Ah, okay. <laughs> Ayan. Nag-chat na sa akin si Sir Joel. Okay. Ang sabi niya po, uh, mamimigay nga po siya. Pinonfirm niya nga po na mamimigay po siya ng... 
ng ayun. Yung GCash load. Ayan. So, coming from Cashew Philippines po. Ayan. So, again, yung material po na i-discuss natin is from Cashew Italy. But, uh, I think we can still apply this here in our setup po in the Philippines. Okay. So, to so start with, I'm gonna share po my presentation. Ayan. So, ayan po. This is just the part one. So, there will be a part two. Uh, it will be announced soon no? in, in the Casio Education Philippines page. So, the title is The World by the Numbers. Uh, this is a mathematics invest investigation webinar with the aid, of course, of the Casio technology. Uh, the topics that is embedded in in this webinar are three things, no? Yung forensic science, mathematical modeling, and of course, the real life cases that we somehow, somehow, no, parang we wanted to try to solve, no? Uh, again, this is from, the material came from Casio Italy. Po. Ayan. So to start with, let's have the introduction, no? The subject forensic science, which these edu educational activities are linked, is an specific discipline that may not be seen uh, integrated in our curriculum. No? Hindi naman talaga siya naka-integrate, lalo, lalo na sa high school, hindi po siya naka-integrate. No? But uh, the, the rationale behind why, why Casio Italy or, and the education sector in Italy try, tried to integrate forensic science is that they also wanted to feature the application of mathematics to the different fields. No, to the different fields. For example, in biology and economics, engineering, physics, no? Kasi usually kasi um, ang, ang, ang direct uh, application na alam natin no? o, of mathematics is of course is engineering. No? Kasi kaya, sabi nga niya, pag kukuha ka ng engineering courses, sobrang daming math. No? So this is not the case. Actually, mathematics is present in our everyday living. No? So kahit sa ang aspect ng buhay natin, um, present talaga si math. So hindi siya talaga mawawala. From, from day zero, no? from, from, from the ano yun? Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, no? so first three words sa Bible sa Genesis, in the beginning. So from there, mag, magbibilang ka na kaagad, in the beginning, so parang day zero yun, di ba? Or day one pala. So, no? so day one. So magbibilang ka na agad. So there is math already. So so yun siya no, no. Talagang mathematics is really really embedded in our daily lives, no. Kahit in, minsan hindi lang natin na-recognize, minsan hindi lang natin napapansin, pero talagang embedded na yung math sa buhay natin. So yun nga, that's the reason of Cash Italy why they integrated forensic science. No, parang ma-integrate din uh, for them to see that forensic science is also uh, using mathematics, no, no, especially in solving cases. No? Yun siya. Okay. Forensic science. Forensic science is the application of scientific techniques and methodology to traditional investigations of a judicial nature. Forensic pathology, toxicology, genetics, psychology, criminology, anthropology, IT, etc entomology and natural course math can be decisive when solving the most complex investigative cases thanks to the development and the degree of accuracy progressively obtained from such disciplines no so your number of cases in italy no has increased compared to solved cases solved no sa italy uh, over the years has increased compared to the past few years so kaya ito rin yung nakitang reason nila why they wanted to integrate no forensic sciences i think this is this will also be magki-click din sa atin dito sa philippines why because doon sa isang um, tv program so si Cardo kasi no masyadong sumikat lately no kahit na nag-off air na yung kanyang station pero somehow it made an impact no si Cardo so maraming nangangarap na maging mga police no, dahil kay Cardo. And and oh, kahit naman sa mga estudyante ko if I, if if somehow no nagkakaroon kami ng informal na usapan oh, what do you want to be in the near future they always say gusto kong mag-police sir so I want gonna take criminology. So tuminsan naman sabi, eh, basta sir wala walang math so sasabi ko talaga eh halos lahat naman ng course no, lahat ng courses may math naman sabi niyo. Sir yung minimal lang na math so, kaya nga po mag-cream kasi minimal lang ang math so not, not knowing 
na lalo kapag ikaw yung ma-assign sa crime scene, no? At lalo kapag magsusolve ka ng cases. You will also be using mathematics, no? So, to, to really parang solidify your evidences. So, yun siya. Okay. This is the first question, no? Na ating mamimigay ng prices si Sir Joel. So, ang Casio Philippines, rather. Okay. So, um, the question will be this one. What is the first ever product of Casio? Ayan, uh, ulitin ko, my cash price, it will be sent through GCash, I think. No, bahala si Sir Joel kung paano niya sisend yung, ano, oh, yung, yung prices. So, what is the first ever product of Casio? So, yung una makapag-comment ng tamang sagot, siya po ang bibigyan natin ng price. So, ayan. Ayan. So, good morning po ulit sa lahat. Ayan, oh, mukhang madami nang nag-good morning sa atin. Calculator daw. <laughs> ayan, may nag-comment na. Calculator daw. So, hindi po. <laughs> ayan, hindi po. Reswatch po. So, hindi rin. Sapatos, Eddie Miao. <laughs> Um, clue. Clues. Medyo hindi siya related sa alam niyo today na products ni Casio. Ayan. So, may nagko-comment pa. Okay. So, hindi po siya calculator. Ayan. Good morning po ulit. So, ayan. Habang nag-aantay tayo na ano, ng mga responses at saka ng mga ano. Ah, sige, magbabati lang muna tayo sa ilang mga friends. Natin sa mga ibang mga friends. Ayan, may nakita na akong tamang sagot. Ayan, no? May nakita na akong tamang sagot. So, wave-wave lang tayo sa muna sa nakatamang sagot. So, ayan siya. Bahala na, no? Ayan, dalawa na yung, tatlo na yung nakikita kong nagsabi na, ano, kaya lang yung first, sabi ko kanina yung first na makakapagbigay ng tamang sagot, siya yung mananalo ng cash price natin. Okay. Sige. Um, medyo madami na nagsagot, no? So, uh, later, basta sasabihin po namin kung sino nanalo later, no? Si Sir Joel, kukontakin po ni Sir Buzz sa ni Sir Joel no? kung paano nyo po uh, babibigay yung contact details para po sa inyong price. So, ayun pa, electric calculator, camera, no? So, sige lang po. <laughs> ayan, cigarette holder, battery, wristwatch, ayan. So, reveal na natin ang tamang sagot. So, The first ever product po ni Casio is, ayan, new Biwa Pipe. The first invention of Tadao Casio, the founder of Casio. It was uh, useful for Japanese workers because they could use both hands while smoking. So this is the first ever no, na, na product ni Casio. Okay, finger ring. <laughs> okay, ring. So, sabagay, ring naman kasi naman talaga siya. Pero it's actually a pipe. Okay po. Now, bakit ito ang aking unang question for premio? Kasi I want you to, okay, think of this one. Think of this one. What do you see in the image? Of course, in the image, nakalagay dyan, no smoking sign. But, 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 but what it comes with the image? No? So what is in the image? Sige nga po, so no smoking sign. So ayan na, although sinabi ko kanina yung first, na padak ni Casio is a uh, pipe na ginagamit for cigarette smoking. So, I will still say that cigarette smoking is bad and dangerous to your health. Ayan po. Kaya, ito sumunod the picture ko is no smoking sign. And the question will be, and the question will be now, what do you see in the image? So, ayan. So, tingnan natin sa comment box kung ano yung nakikita nila sa image. Tingnan natin kung may magsasagot. O, oh, ayan. Meron hindi nakapaniwala. <laughs> No, oh wow, now I know. So hello, hello sa mga... Aba, nagantay ako ng responses sa comment section natin ng what do they see in the image. Okay, ano po, uh, bati muna tayo sa mga friends natin. Hello to the math teachers po all over the Philippines. Especially yung mga classmates ko po sa MTAP. No po, ayan po. And special thanks to Sister Illuminada Coronel sa lahat po ng tulong po sa amin. Of course, kasama niya ang iba pong MTAP board during that time na nag-aaral po kami. Okay. Integral sign daw. Smoke pipe. Ayan. Ayan yung mga sagot nila doon sa image natin. No? Integral sign na medyo nakiga. Ayan. So, medyo iba sila, no? Iba-iba. Ayan. Maganda yung mga responses natin kasi iba-iba. Cigarette, pipe ring. Ah, ito siguro yung sagot nila po nung kanina pa na picture natin. So, pero dito, no? Ang sabi nila ng iba, okay, cigarette. Oh, 
5. Okay. So, bakit? Bakit ito yung gusto kong tinanong? Bakit ito yung question ko? Bakit kaya? Why? Because, let us try to reflect in a conversation of a girl and a male person. So, ito po yung conversation nila. The, the girl turned towards Paolo. How is it not a pipe? Yun po yung picture kanina na pinakita ko po. No? Ito pong picture po na ito. So, ito yung pinag-usapan nila ni Paolo at saka ng girl. Sabi po ni girl, How is it not a pipe? What is it then? Do you mean that this is referring to something else? That the pipe symbolizes something? Sagot ni Paolo, No, no. The, the issue is far more earthy. The object that we can see in the picture is not a pipe. If it were, we would be able to hold it in our hands and see all the sides of it in different perspectives. If that thing there really were a pipe, we would be able to smoke it. So obviously, it's not a pipe, but rather the representation of a pipe. That's so logical, sabi nung babae, no? Sabi nung girl na kausap ni Paolo. Ni Paolo. Of course, that's exactly the point that I wanted to reach. A similar situation to that of the pipe is presented with theories and models from physics. From the reality of the experiment, we obtain indications, prohibitions, and numbers, and based on these, we build or modify the model of physical reality. Model? Do you mean a more or less suitable representation? A bit like this pipe being the representation of a real pipe? Exactly. So, yun siya, no? So, siyempre, pag pinakita yung image, yun sasabihin nyo, ah, that's a pipe, no? That's a pipe. Oh, to, talaga, talaga naman, no? That's the picture of a pipe. But it's not really a pipe. So, so, so pag, uh, pag tinanong kayo, oh, ano yung nakita nyo sa picture? Pipe. So, parang sinasabi ni Paolo nung mali. Dapat, sabi niya, kompleto dapat yung sagot mo, no? Dapat, it's just an image or a model or a representation of a pipe. Kasi kung pipe daw siya, no? Mahahawakan mo siya, makikita mo lahat ng kanyang ano, makikita mo lahat ng kanyang uh, dimensions, no? Tapos magagamit mo pa daw siya. So, yun yung sinasabi ni Paolo. Yun yung argument ni Paolo. So, that's only an, an argument, uh, a representation of the real life ng pipe. So, bakit yun? Bakit yung shinare yung story na yan? Bakit yung shinare yung story na yan? Ito po kasi yun. Mathematical model. No? What is mathematical model? A mathematical model is the formal representation of ideas or knowledge regarding a phenomenon. Okay, bakit, bakit, bakit yun yung picture na ginamit ko sa mathematical model? Kasi yun yung argument din natin, no? Ang sudyante natin, ang sudyante natin laging sinasabi, ano ba talaga ang, ang application ng math sa buhay natin, sir? Ano ba talaga? Ang dami na lang tanong, eh, hindi ko na po magagamit ang math, sir. Eh, bakit ko pa siya aralin? No, ayaw mo nang bumagsak-bagsak na ako sa math. So, no, it's actually, uh, marami siya talagang gamit, no? Yung math natin sa totoong buhay, hindi lang talaga natin na realize no and 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 the same the same the same idea dun sa da, dun, dun sa argument ni ni Paolo at saka ni, ni girl doon sa idea of representing pipe no representation of the pipe lang yung nandoon sa picture this image of the pipe so kapag gumagawa rin tayo ng mga ng ng mga for example sa word problems diba nagre-represent tayo ng equations those are actually mathematical models lang nung situation na ating ginagawa. No, 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 ating tinatry na isolve na word problems. So, ganun siya. So, ayan. So, hello din po. No, hello din po sa aking classmate ng college, Sir Rogelio, Rogelio Enriquez from Quezon City. Ayan po. So, yun siya. Yun po siya, no? Yun, yun, yun po yung ginagawa. Hindi, hindi lang natin, uh, masya, hindi lang ma-realize, masyado naman yung sudyante natin, na yung mga real-life problems na sinosolve natin using math, sa mga topics natin from from mathematics. Hindi nila alam that we are having mathematical models of the real life situations or scenarios that we are having. No? Kaya means hindi talaga nila uh, ma ma uh, ma-appreciate, ma-appreciate. No? No nung uh, of course, especially sa mga sa mga uh, public school teachers, di ba? Lalo nung meron pa tayong face-to-face -face setup. Um Diba sa classroom observation natin, there is one, uh, there is one, uh, tawag dito, strand there, yung, yung parang ini-scorean sa'yo. 
na na um, paano mo tawag dito paano mo ituturo yung isang topic okay kung paano mo i-share sa estudyante yung isang topic di ba ang ginawa ko doon mo, mo, ang ginagawa ko doon mostly lately especially last year no uh, magkukuha ko ng mga videos for example sa grade 7 ang topic ko is inequalities linear equation in one variable ah may mali <laughs> ang inequalities nga linear inequality in one variable let's say x nga so Of course, ah, uh, mas masyadong abstract siya pag sinabi mo na x plus uh, x plus something it should be less than this one. So, so masyado siyang abstract. Ano ang ibig sabihin no, no? Actually, ang ginawa ko to introduce the linear inequality in one variable is that um nag-video ako na tumatawid ako sa tulay. And then no, pinocus ko yung 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 uh, camera doon sa label doon sa bridge. No? Di ba may nakalagay doon halimbawa 20 pesos so that means 20 tons. So ibig sabihin, yun yung weight limit na kaya ni bridge. So ibig sabihin, uh, 20 tons yung weight limit. Hindi ka na pwedeng lumagpas sa 20 tons o, o, or else masisira na magkakaroon na ng crack yung bridge, no? Or or kung sobrang bigat pa na, sobrang tindi pa na mas mabigat pa sa 20 tons for example, 50 tons na yung tatawin, no? higit pa sa doble. Of course, talagang babagsak at guguho na yung bridge. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, there is a limit, no? no, no it should be less than 20 tons. Now, let's say, yung truck, cargo truck, cargo truck. Let's say, sabihin natin, kapag walang laman yung truck, kapag walang laman yung truck, sabihin natin, ano ba ang issue ng bigat ng truck? O sige, sabihin natin, hindi ko alam kung ito ito ang sukat ng truck that time. Eh. Kalimutan ko na yung, ano, yung COT ko nun. Okay. So, yung laman, for example, kung wala lang na, laman ng truck, it weighs, sabihin natin na, uh, na ano, 148, parang mamasyad eh. 2,400 plus na, na kilograms. Okay? Y- yung, yung truck. Siyempre, siyempre, yung, yung ikakarga mo kay truck, siya yung nababago-bago. Hindi mo alam kung ano yung bigat ng ilalagay mo sa truck. So, yun yung represent mo ng variable. Let's say X. So, X plus yung yung weight ng truck ng mula siyang laman that will be 2000 2400 plus na kilograms should be less than of course 20 tons so this is the mathematical representation the mathematical model of that situation of that certain situation so important talaga yung mathematical model so how that's how i introduced yung topic ko na linear inequality in one part so, diba? At least, somehow, you try to connect the reality of the world dun sa topic na i-discuss mo. Okay po. So, um, ayun po. So, that's the mathematical model. No? And then, uh, we, 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 the definition dito na pinresent na mathematical model is a formal representative, a representation of ideas or knowledge regarding a phenomenon. There are three fundamental points that should be gathered. First, a mathematical model is the pre- representation of a phenomenon. O nga po, yung pangyayari. Secondly, such a representation is not discursive or in words, but formal. It is namely expressed in mathematical language. For example, nga nang sinabi ko kanina. No, 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 no you, have, you have presented an, in- an equation. And then, third, no direct route exists from the reality to mathematics. The phenomenon studied does not determine its mathematical representation. What you do instead is to translate ideas and knowledge about a phenomenon into formulas. So, yun siya. No? And, di ba, sinasabi natin, usually, ang pinakamalapit na, ano, na application daw ng math sa realidad ay lagi daw puro sa statistics kasi yung probability, yung mga prediction, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Pero actually, kahit yung ibang topics po natin sa math, ay meron po talaga siyang application. No? So, mamaya po, Meron po ulit tayo mga ano, baka po kasi para may nababasa kung comments kanina, nasasag sila kasi ano. Tapos meron pa po ulit tayong prices. So, uh, meron pa pong dalawa. Okay po, meron pa pong dalawa. So, late, wait, wait po tayo mamaya ulit doon. Okay, so next. Okay, so this is our first case that we wanted to uh, discuss. So, may tanong ako dito. no So, dun ulit natin kukunin yung mananalo ng second na mananalo, na tao, na person. Okay, the first case. The title of the first case that we'll be presenting will be the Cartesian Campus. So, this is actually a group activity. No? 
So kapag face to face lalo, nako mas masaya to lalo kung face to face na. O may balik na tayo na face to face. Okay, so for now, no, let's try to observe this one. So this is a th- this is the teamwork, no? Kasi sinabi na natin teamwork, thematically big sabihin para may situation siya. No. So you are trying to set the mood. Okay, we are trying to set the mood of the situation. No, na presented here. Okay. In the following activity, the linear relationship that exists between the diameter of a drop of blood and the height from which it fell is studied. And whether a graphical representation of it can be established. The themes addressed make reference to analytic geometry and to the representation of straight lines on the Cartesian plane. So, ito po yung gagamitin natin na mathematical no? concepts sa ating pag-solve ng first case. Okay, so what we'll be needing? Okay, kit materials. The kit is designed per work group, which may be made up of three and five students or three to five students at teacher's discretion. So, of course, si teacher ang mamimili. No? And then, uh, of course, our featured calculator, 991EX scientific calculator. Okay. So this is the phases of time required. No? Presentation of the activity, introduction to the story, and first working hypothesis. So one R. And then second preparatory activity, BPA analysis. So mame as we discussed nothing on yung BPA analysis. One hour, one hour and 30 minutes. And the third solving the case. It's another one and a half hours. Okay. So, let's have the first case. So, syempre, setting up the mood. Explain mo kung ano yung nangyari. Okay, the Cartesian campus. Okay, this is our first case. Once Sandra finished her studies, she immediately found a job at the investigative division in her city. She had been working there for four years, but her role was still to support more senior colleagues. It seemed as if her superiors didn't trust her and she she found his she found this very demoralizing. The explanations given to her were not enough. In order to be a detective, you need a great deal of experience. Be patient, your turn will come. Okay. Entering her boss's office, she immediately noticed a file on the desk. The University Campus Serial Thief. So, from the title itself, so alam niyo na yung mga, ayam na. So, yung mga kamag-anak ni... Ayun. <laughs> Three months ago, she had been entrusted with her first case, and now she had to prove that she had what it takes. Her predecessor in the investigations, two years earlier, had now retired, but had, however, been able to pass on all the information to her. Unfortunately, though, despite careful reading and further investigations, she had not yet come to any conclusions. The most important information on which she was working lay on the desk, and mentally she went over the incident for the umpteenth time. Okay. Ito po yung, yung kanyang ano, file. Nasa file. Okay, ito na po yung nasa kanyang, uh, nakita niyang file dun sa desk ng kanyang boss. The story began two years earlier at the new university campus, an area just outside the city for students and professors working in different scientific fields, from physics to biology, mathematics, and neuroscience. Uh, neuroscience, no. Okay. The modern structure covers a vast area. Organized into small buildings, housing, one or two laboratories, and associated offices. These buildings are positioned regularly along straight paths and at right angles to each other in accordance with a very practical location grid. No? So, <laughs> eto pa lang, no? parang sinasabi na kaagad na nasa Cartesian plane ka kasi <laughs> positioned regularly along straight paths. And no, at right angles. O di ba, alam naman natin pag sa Cartesian plane, no, the lines are perpendicular to each other. Okay. So, sineset up mo na yung mood no, na we are really having a representation of a Cartesian plane. Each one of these buildings is, in fact, 
indicated by a pair of progressive numbers originating from the entrance to the campus where their reception is located labeled 0 and 0. So from there, no, lado na solidify yung ating claim that it is really a Cartesian plane. No? Tapos, no, yung where the reception area is located na nakalabel na 0, 0. Hindi, alam mo na agad na yung reception area is the origin in the Cartesian plane. In practice, the planners had reproduced a Cartesian plane in honor to in honor of Descartes. Kasi nga sa Italy siya, di ba? No, yung setup niya sa Italy. So, in honor of Rene Descartes. A great scientist. The thefts, and unfortunately, a homicide, had occurred within the space of two years. So, within two years nangyari yung mga crime. And the thief had struck without leaving many traces or any clues on purpose, almost wanting to challenge whoever was trying to investigate. The way in which the crimes had been carried out indicated that the thief was almost certainly the same person and that they therefore fell into serial criminal category. Kasi nga, so sobrang dami na yung napangyayari. And then they, they were able to observe na isang tao lang yung gumagawa. Kaya they were able to conclude that it's a serial criminal category. Kasi isang tao lang. Okay, next. These are the, the, uh, the happenings, so yung parang chronological events. First, the first steps took place during the night of January 23, 2013. The genetics and nuclear physics laboratories were targeted and a pathogenic bacteria culture and a container of radioactive liquid were stolen from them. Two female researchers were found collapsed but without any injuries in the laboratories, of course. Both had been knocked out in their respective laboratories with ether. Clues. Ano daw yung clue from that scene? Wala. Okay, so no trace of clue. Any clue. The second robbery took place during the evening of April 22, 2013. A researcher from the Department of Mathematics was found unconscious in his office in mathematics building. The crime had been carried out in the same way, struck in the back and a gauze soaked in ether. A file containing a study on a cryptographic algorithm that the researcher had been developing for a large bank was stolen. Oh, there's a, my clue na naiwan, a pair of footprints in the garden beside the building, from which the police scientists had concluded that the killer could be tall and well built. Ayan, so medyo may clue na naiwan. Next. The third crime took place during the evening of March 15, 2014. The unconscious bodies were found in the Potonics and Geology building. The victims were a cleaning attendant and a professor of the department, both female. The crime had been carried out in the same way, Ether. A high-powered laser developed by the Photonics Research Group and a diamond crystal from a professor's office were stolen. So, there's another clue. Ano yung clue? A recording from CCTV showed that in the hour leading up to the robbery, a short person had quickly passed through the department of Photonics but nobody else. Okay. In the fourth scene, in the fourth uh, event naman, so fourth na crime, the fourth robbery occurred during the morning of December 27, 2014. Ano yung na-stole? Ano yung nawala? Stolen? A ceramic superconductor developed by the physics laboratory and secret, secret experimental protocols for in vitro growth of skin cells to treat burns. Wala ori, ulit iniwan na traces. So no clues. <laughs> okay. Na ulit. Finally, okay, finally, that during December 31, 2014, the campus janitor was found dead at the entrance to the campus in the reception area. The homicide was attributed to the same person because a ghost with traces of ether was found a few meters from the corpse. 
The janitor probably managed to free himself from the thief's clutches, but then got caught up in an unfortunate brawl. As he was falling, the janitor hit his head on the floor and died from an internal hemorrhage. Ano yung clue na iniwan? Some blood stains on the floor close to the victim's body and on the reception desk. Okay. The file contained photographs of the blood stains and the scientific report stated, close to the corpse, there is a group of blood stains on the tiled flooring in the reception. They are round and regular in shape with an average diameter of 1.6 centimeters. There are some blood stains at progressively greater distances aligned in a direction from the corpse to, yeah, to the, from the corpse toward the reception desk a couple of meters away again round and regular in shape with an average diameter of 2.3 centimeters on the reception desk a height of 80 centimeters from the ground blood stains are scattered close to the switch to open the doors and are again round and regular in shape with an average diameter of 1.8 centimeters. Uh, there were blood stains on the victim's knuckles. From DNA analysis, it emerged that they were not consistent with the victim's blood. So, hindi yon yung dugo ng victim. However, they were consistent with the blood stains on the floor. So, medyo mag ka na doon, di ba? Finally, a type sheet was found on the reception counter which for the first time explicitly set a challenge for the investigators it read anyone who has been misled by the simple evidence is wrong where will i strike next time will you be clever enough to follow me i will strike where the straight lines meet but it is the whole that you must consider so, naghahamon pa yung ating suspect. No? Yung gumawa ng crime, rather. Hindi pala siya suspect. So, siya mismo yung gumawa ng crime. Naghahamon siya doon sa taong gusto daw na huhuli sa kanya. Ulitin natin yun. Okay? Anyone who has been misled by simple evidence is wrong. Where will I strike next? Will you be clever enough to follow me? Ito yung clues, the important clues from the phrase. I will strike where the straight lines straight lines meet. So, parang nagkakaroon ka na ng ID na that it will be intersecting lines. Tama po. And then, but it is the whole that you must consider. So, whole. So, ibig sabihin, parang sinasabi sa'yo na, is it a whole number? Okay. So, let us continue. Ito po ang ating tanong. This was all of the material available to Sandra. She knew that the, the, the serial robbers loved to compete with investigators from the, no, from the previous no, na binasa natin na iniwan na note. Okay. She realized that this was a direct tactic from the thief and that, as announced, they would strike. O yun nga, yung sinabi natin. So, should Sandra expect some tall or short? Why, what hypothesis about what happened can be drawn from the blood stains? So, where would the tip strike next? So, yun po yung inyong sasagutan. So, where would the tip strike next? Okay. So, representing the, the university campus, no, no, ito po yung ating Cartesian plane. Ayan. No, Nakagrid na po siya. Nakagrid na siya. Locations of the departments where the robberies occurred. So, entrance, reception area. So, so yan po yung ating origin. Zero, zero. And then, Department of Mathematics, two and four. So, ito po yun. Ay, sumobra. Mali ng pindot. Ayan. So, ayan po yun. Two and four. And then, Department of Geology, seven and one. So, siya po yun, 7 and 1. So, yun po yung location. And then, Department of Nuclear Physics at 0 and 15. So, ito po yun. Alright. 
And then, Department of Theoretical Physics, that's at 3 and 6. So, ito po yun. Okay? And then, Department of Photonics, 4 and 7. So, ito po yun. And then, Department of Genetics at 2 and 11. Ito po yun. And then, the Department of Biotechnology at 7 and 14. So, ito po yun. Okay. So, meron na po tayong Cartesian plane. So, sabi, ano, ano yung clues na sinabi kanina ng suspect natin? The next daw po na mag-strike siya, uh, kung saan mag-intersect yung, mag-meet yung dalawang lines. So, paano ako magkakaroon ng dalawang lines? So, somehow, parang, okay, parang ito, line to, oh. Ayan, parang line siya, no? So, it's somewhat, this is a straight line. At the same time, ito rin, parang somewhat a straight line. So, parang iniisip mo, uh, parang may straight lines nga sila, no? So, ano gagawin natin to, to verify our claim? That this one is a straight line and this is also a straight line. Sige nga, let's continue. Okay, preparatory activity number one. BPA analysis, blood stain pattern analysis. So, yun po yung BPA. Blood stain pattern analysis. A little theory and history. Analysis through shape, dimension, and arrangement of blood stains is called blood stain pattern analysis or BPA. The first studies on blood stains take back to 1895 to the, to the activities of the Polish forensic physician Dr. Edward Piotrowski, followed by other researchers who continued the analysis on many aspects. 1971 is the another is another very important date. This was the year in which the essay Flight Characteristics and Stain Patterns of Human Blood by Herbert Leon MacDonald was published, a real milestone in the field. Blood is a tissue in the fluid state made up of liquid part plasma and a particulate component erythrocytes, erythrocytes rather, red blood cells, leukocytes, white blood cells, and thrombocytes, platelets. It has a density of 1.055 to 1.066, water has a density of 1. A viscosity of between 3.5 and 5.5 times that of water, and a surface tension close to that of water. Due to its surface tension, the outer layer of, uh, of a drop of blood behaves like an elastic film, and such a property has an essential influence on the behavior during its flight and subsequent impact on a surface. The viscosity of blood depends, depends on various factors such as temperature and stress or on particular, particular situations like, for example, dehydration. It is not, therefore, a constant factor. Okay. These physical characteristics of blood, in addition to the volume of a single drop, its speed over the course of its flight, the trajectory at the time of impact and the type of surface on which it impacts determine the shape of the blood stains and their dimensions. Therefore, from crime scenes that present traces of blood, it is possible to extract considerable information about how the event unfolded. In particular, from analysis of the morphology and the distribution of blood stains, it is possible to determine, okay, one, the origin of the nature of the event that produced the blood stain, two, the distance between the point of impact and of the blood stain and its origin, three, the type and direction of the force that caused the injury, four, the number of blows or shots, five, the position of the attacker, the victim, and any objects during the attack, and lastly, the movements of the victim and their attacker, and the possible displacement of objects following the attack. Okay, so kaya importante po natin malaman yung mga background. Okay, in particular, blood stain that is round and regular in shape on a smooth surface indicates a slow ver vertical trickle from a certain height and measurements from laboratory examinations show that the diameter of the blood stain 
is directly proportional to the height from which it fell. This proportionality can be expressed by the equation y equal to a plus bx, where y is the height from which the drop of blood fell, x is the diameter of the blood stain on the smooth surface. Okay. All right. The values of the coefficients are uh, a is equal to negative 222 and b, the co numerical coefficient of x, is 182, where the units of measurements are expressed in centimeters for both x and y. Okay, two scholars, Romanese and Ferreiro, observe that the diameter of a blood stain increases regularly with regard to the height from which it falls up to the height limit, after which it, which it stabilizes and does not increase any further as height increases. This height limit is around 170 centimeters. Beyond this height, the above equation can no longer be used. So, kailangan importante natin maintindihan ulit ito, no? Yun, no? Sabi doon, no? no? Kailangan hindi lalagpas yung taas sa 170 cm. So, else, yung ating model na y is equal to, eh, yung y is equal to negative 222 plus 182x, di na siya magagamit. Okay, next. Okay, so let's have this activity, no? So what is the material, scientific calculator, sheet of graph or squared paper, cell phone, tablet with Casio, Edu Plus, internet connection, or whatsoever. So, yun siya. Okay, the purpose of the activity is to study the function y is equal to negative 222 plus 182x, which defines the relationship between the diameter of the blood stain and the height from which it falls, representing it graphically on the Cartesian plane. So itong activity na to, parang pinaparealize mo no, sa estudyante bilang investigator yung behavior ng no, mga blood droplets doon sa floor. Okay? So, ito yun. No? Ganun ka lang sa how pinapa-experience mo sa kanila maging investigator. Ganun. Okay? On the sheet, draw the Cartesian plane, no, Cartesian axis. What do the x-axis and y-axis represent? Hmm, di ba kanina sinabi na natin yon yung height at saka yung diameter. Okay. Height ng pagkakahulog at saka diameter ng blood droplet. Define the scale for the unit of the measure on the graph. Plot at least 10 points in between 1 cm and 10 cm in diameter. The coordinates of the points are calculated using the calculator and the aforementioned, aforementioned function. Okay. Sige, gawin natin. Uh, labas ako sa pre uh, presentation ko. Open natin si class list. Okay. So, usually, uh, ito yung makikita sa inyong screen calculator. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, beta, beta copy ng class list natin, ng emulator. Okay. Okay. So, we wanted to observe. So, kunin natin yung ano niya, uh, table functions. So, press menu, and then arrow down, makikita niyo si table ay number 9. So, pag na, since naka-highlight naman na siya, pwede niyo na i-press si equals. Pero kung makikita niyo, may mga smaller numbers on the right, lower right corner. No? So, yun yung mga shortcut key. So, you can press 9. Automatic papasok ka na doon. So, you have y is equal to negative 222 plus 182x. So, f of x is also y, di ba? So, kailan sinabi yun? Nung grade 8 sila, function. Okay. So, you have negative 222 plus 182x. So, this is your x sa ilalim ni Owen. So, when you press equals na labas g of x, so just ignore it. Just press equals. And then, sabi, di ba? 1 to 10. So, we will start with 1 and we will end with 10. And then our increment will be 1. Bakit 1? Bakit hindi pwedeng 0.5? Bakit hindi pwedeng 0.5? No? Eh, bahala ka kung anong tip mo sa buhay. But in our case, we wanted to use 1. Okay. And this will be our table of values. So, medyo lakihan natin yung screen. Ayan. So, 
So, pag 1 cm ang ating diameter, negative 40 daw. Kapag 2 cm ang diameter, 142 cm daw. Pag uh, 3 cm, 324 daw. Pag 4 cm, 506 daw. So, sige nga, kaba pa natin. And so on. Okay, so yun na siya. Okay, makikita na siya. Ayan siya. Okay. Okay, kung igagraph naman natin siya, ito yon. So, height which the drop fell, okay, in centimeters. And then, yung nasa x-axis natin, diameter of the blood, blood stain in centimeters. So, ito siya. So, ito siya, no? So, medyo nakikita nyo, linear naman talaga siya, talaga papa, papata kasi we use linear function. Okay. So, analysis. What is the validity range of the points plotted on the x-axis? Hanggang saan lang valid? Prove this by marking with vertical lines. Kasi di ba sabi natin kanina, ano yung sinabi natin kanina doon sa taas? May height limit. Di ba? May height limit lang yung pwede natin gamitin. So mag-iisip kayo yung sudyante nyo, di ba? Kasi binigay mo na kanina yung mga conditions. So hanggang saan lang yung range ng uh, diameter ng droplets na po pwede na allowable. Kasi nga, meron siyang Limit. Okay. Plot another graph that represents the relationship in the validity range. Okay, ayan na yung graph. At which coordinate does the line intersect the x-axis? O, oh, ito yung nag-intersect siya kay x-axis at negative 40. Ano? 1 and, and negative 40 sa ating calculator, di ba? So, oh, yun. Hahanapin nila yung x-intercept. So, paano yun? Baba tayo, baba, baba. Ayan, baba. Type natin zero. When we press equals, ayun. Negative 222. Dapat siya. Pero dahil dito sa atin, ano lang siya. No? Putol kasi yung graph na yan. So, di natin makikita kung ibababa pa siya extended. Okay. At which coordinate does the line intersect? Oh, nasabi. What physical meaning can we attribute to the two coordinate numbers of this point? Negative 222, tapos 0. Feasible ba siya? Eh, negative yung measurement na sinasabi. Diba? Yung height from which the draft fell is in centimeter. So, measurement pinag-usapan natin. Tapos, ako mo, negative 222. Pwede ba yun? So, pag-iisipin mo ulit yung estudyante mo, diba? Pwede ba yun? Okay, eh, syempre, alam natin na hindi yun pwede. <laughs> Wala namang negative na measurement. Okay. So, does the point 1 and negative 40 provided by the function have any real significance? O di syempre, alam natin kung anong sagot dyan naman. Wala na naman. Kasi nga, negative yung measurement. Eh, wala naman tayong negative measurement. So, yun siya. So, mag-iisip ulit yung bata. Okay. Solution now. So, what will be now the solution? Okay. Solution. Number one. The shape of the blood stain Stains found on the floor allowed the following hypothesis to be formulated. The incident that caused them was not a particularly violent incident. The blood fell vertically with regard to the impacts, impact surfaces, floor, and the reception counter. The blood most probably belongs to the killer. And the janitor's knuckles soiled with the same blood. DNA analysis would indicate that there were a brawl during which the janitor punched the killer, a delicate area that may bleed due to a punch, no blades or items with traces of blood were found, is the nose. So, nasapak no janitor yung killer sa ilong. Bleeding from the nose is slow and the drops fall vertically. Siyempre, no? Kung, kung ikaw nakatayo ka ng diretsyo, no? tama ba yun? Pero na lang kung malaki yung chan, nakaharang sa chan. <laughs> diba? So, pero, pero kung hindi naman ganun kalakihan yung chan, no? diretso yun sa floor. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. And then, therefore, if this hypothesis were true, the dimensions of the blood stains would provide information about the killer's height. So, nagkakaroon ka na ng clue, no? The different diameters of blood stains and their position allow a hypothesis to be formulated about how the events unfolded. So, ito yung mga yun. 
diameter of blood stains. So you have 3, 1.6 centimeters, 2.3 centimeters, 1.8 centimeters. Calculated height from which it fell, 69.2 centimeters, 196.6 centimeters, 105.6 centimeters. Okay, reconstruction of events. Yung, yung diameter ng blood na 1.6 at yung height na 69.2, right? the killer or the thief bent over close to the janitor's body after the brawl. They were probably looking for something in the janitor's pockets. Okay. So, parang nag-reason out ka na kung bakit ganun lang yung height no? ng pagkakahulog ng blood stain, ng blood droplet. Pala. Next, dun sa 2.3 centimeters and 196.6 centimeters, the thief is walking toward the reception desk. Based on the validity range of the relationship, this information is not very reliable in enabling us to define the height of the killer. Kasi lumagpas, di ba? Ano yung limit natin kanina? 150, di ba? Okay. Then, 1.8 centimeters. 105.6 centimeters. The thief was probably wanting to leave and was looking for the switch to open the door. His nose was therefore above the desk. The drops were still falling vertically, round and regular in shape. Kasi di ba, yun na yung sinabi. All of which are round and regular in shape. In this case, the distance calculated is within the validity, validity range and is therefore reliable. In order to find the height of the killer, the height calculated using the blood stains is added to the height of the table. So, height of the, binigay din mga kanina yung height ng table. 80 plus 105.6 is equal to 185.6 centimeters. The results from this analysis, in addition to the clues from the footprints found at the second robbery, support the hypothesis that the suspect is tall and well-built. Okay. So, medyo umaayo na ang clue. Next. The answer to the third question can be found in the diagram showing the locations of the offenses and in the type note using the little fantasy and a visual representation. It may be useful to gather the information in a summary table. Ayan na yung question. So kung, di ba, sabi ko kanina yung makakasagot dun sa third question, no? Yung makakasagot dun sa third question na saan siya susunod na gagawa ng crime yung makakakuha ng price. So, sige nga, tignan natin kung meron ang makakasagot. Ayan, tignan natin kung meron ang makakasagot using this information. No? Time, first crime, place, genetics, uh, ano yung ano niya, coordinates 2 and 11, and nuclear physics, 0 and 15, victims, 2 women. And then second crime, mathematics, it's at 2 and 4, and then one man, then, yun yung victim, isang tao, na lalaki, isang lalaki. Third crime, photonics, at 4 and 7, and geology at 7 and 1, uh, two and, uh, dalawang babae yung ating, uh, yeah, dalawang babae yung ating victims. And the fourth crime, theoretical physics at 3 and 6, and bio biotechnology at 7 and 14. So dalawang lalaki ulit yung victims. And then the fifth crime, which is at the reception area, so 0, 0, isang lalaki ang nam namatay. Now, if we're going to have, if we're going to have, Again, the Cartesian plane, ito yun. So, we will try to color no, yung yung men in black and then the red, yung pong mga babae. Okay po. So, yun siya. The last clue left on the note, anyone who has been misled by simple evidence is wrong. Which, ayan, where will I strike next? Okay. Looking at the diagram, it seems like the date did not strike at random. But according to a geometric pattern, the places where the victims were women, red dots, and where the victims were black dots, no? men were black dots, appear to be aligned in two straight lines. So, itong black, parang straight line siya, and then itong red, parang straight line ulit siya. How can this hypothesis be confirmed? If a straight line passes through a point on the Cartesian plane, then, algebraically, the coordinates of that point satisfy the equation of a straight line. 
So, all points along the straight line satisfy the same equation. O, sige nga. Tingnan natin kung may makakasagot na. Tingin tayo sa reception, I mean, sa comment section. Tingin tayo sa comment section. Okay, wala, no? So, habang mag-aantay tayo na medyo manguhula, ayan. So, tingnan nga natin. Good morning po ulit sa lahat. Ayan, we have friends from different places all over the Philippines. Ayan. Watching from Amadeo Cavite daw po. Hello po. Ayan, may sumagot. Department of Photonics daw po. Susunod na crime scene. Ayan. Thank you, Sir Raymond Bautista de Jesus. Hello po. Good morning. Ayan, meron pa kaya ibang manghuhula? Okay. Sayang naman yung cash price. Mahala nyo kayo na makatama. ba? Diba? Oo. Oh. Sayang pa naman ang isi-send sa GCash. Uh, hindi daw namin alam, sir, kung magkano yung price. Uh, basta alam ko, ano yun eh. Hindi bababa sa 3 digits. Sayang din yun, no? Oh. Hindi ko makakapulot basta-basta ng 3 digits. Okay. Sige, next clues. Good morning din po. Ayan, next clues. Sige, para mas maraming makasagot, ito ang mga next clues natin. Ayan, next clues. We can therefore find the equations for the two straight lines using the generic equation or the slope-intercept form na y is equal to mx plus b. No? We can find the, the values of the coefficients for m and b of the two straight lines. So, the value of the slope and the intercept B, y-intercept B. To do this, it is sufficient to have two points that belong to each data series for each line. So, for one line, no, yung red dots, kinuha natin si 0, 0, and 3, and 6. So, these are the two points that we will be using. No, it's a substitute natin doon sa ating y is equal to mx plus B. Okay. So, at 0, 0, no, your x is 0, and then your y is 0. So, ito magiging 0. Tama? And then, si x ay 0. So, x is also 0. So, ito magiging itsura niya. So, 0 is equal to m times 0 plus b. Kasi, y is 0, y is 0, then x is 0. Okay. Simplifying, no, so m times 0, this will eventually be 0. Ang matitira, b equals 0. Okay, so meron na tayong value ni b. Okay, so gamit naman tayo ng, no, isa pang point, si 3 and 6, kasi nagamit na natin si 0, 0. At 3 and 6, okay, your x is 3, your y is 6. So substitute natin ulit, no, y is 6, and then x is 3. So, ito magiging equation natin dyan. 6 is equal to m times 3 is equal to 0. Oh, bakit na yung b mo, sabi mo 0, b? Eh, di ba, yun na, nakuha na natin b is 0. So, gamitin na natin, nakuha mo na eh. Okay. So, ano matitira sa atin? Eh, 0 naman na, na pala ito, sir. 3m is equal to 6. So, we have to divide both sides by 3, giving you m equal to 2. So, meron ka ng value ni m, meron ka ng value ni b. So, ano yung equation natin? y is equal to 2x. No? So, yun yung equation natin. So, the equation of the straight line linked to the female victims is y equals 2x. So, meron na tayong isang line. Meron na tayong isang line. Yay! Ako, malapit na. Okay. Next. For the line identified by the black dots, we choose the points. 0 and 15, and 2 and 11. Okay? So, gamitin muna natin si 0 and 15. At 0 and 15, okay, 0 si x, 15 si y. So, 15 equals m times 0 plus b. Oh, eventually, this will be 0, kasi any number multiplied to 0 is 0. b will be equal to 15. Ayan, b is equal to 15. And then, so, sa second point natin na 2 and 11, x is 2, y is 11. So, 11 is equal to m times 2 plus b. But your b is 15. Tama, your b is 15. So, ang mayayari, we need to subtract 15 on both sides. So, it will give you negative 4 is equal to 2m. And then, 
we need to divide both sides by 2, giving you with m equal to negative 2. Ayan siya, di ba? So, ayan siya. Okay. So, meron ka ng value ni m, meron ka ng value ni b. So, your equation para sa black dots will be y equal to negative 2x plus 15. So, the equation of the straight line linked to the male victims is y equal to negative 2x plus 15. Ayan. Ayan na nga. No, ayan na nga. Meron na tayong dalawang lines. Sabi kanina ng victims, mag-strike daw siya on the next, no, na lugar saan? Where the two lines meet. Sige nga, antay tayo ng makakapagbigay ng tamang sagot. Okay. Ayan na, dami ko na binibigay na clue. Sige nga, tingnan natin kung may magbibigay ng tamang sagot. Tingnan natin. Sayang ang cash price. Ano siya? Sayang ang cash price. Okay, habang wala pang nagsasabi ng sagot, tingnan natin yung mga comment section previously. Okay. Good morning, watching at home from Monto National High School, Ozami City. Hello po, Sir Carl Patrick, Balsita Fiel. Ayan. So, hello, good morning. Bento Salam, I'm Rosie. Po, from Malabang, Lanao del Sur. Hello po. Ayan, parang mga taga-minda na yung nanonood sa atin. Ano? Yeah. Watching from Dao, Na De Dao National High School, SD Okapis. Hello po sa mga taga-Kapis. Ayan. Ang middle name ko po ay Cipriano. Yung pinakaunang Cipriano daw po dito sa Malabon ay galing ng ano, Rojas, Kapis. Ayan po. Hello po. Yun po ay tatay ng lolo ko sa nanay. Ayan. Ayan. Watching from Bulacan, a teacher from Jen Tibucio de Leon National High School. Hello po, Ma'am uh, Maria Rizzo Santillan. Hello po. Ayan. So, meron na bang nagsagot? Ayan, may nagsagot. David Cal and Lagi. Ayan, ang sagot ni Sir is 15 fourths and 15 halves. Oh, yun din ang sagot ni Sir Raymond Bautista de Jesus. 15 fourths and 15 halves. Ayan. So, ano kaya? So, gumamit sila ng, gumamit sila ng, ano, systems of linear equations in two variables. So, try nga natin yan using our calculator. Okay. Kama may ano pala. <laughs> Sige, para masaya. Tingnan natin kung tama yung sagot nila, sir, ha? Sir, ano yung sagot ni sir? Sir David Kailagi and Sir Raymond Bautista de Jesus. Ayan. So, may sagot din si Sir Glenn Ibanez Gilongos. So, sa kanya naman decimal. So, 3.75 and 7.5. Okay. So, ito yung equation natin. We now check the, that the coordinates of the other positions of the buildings where the tape struck. So, whether it will satisfy then, no? So, sa mga equations natin. So, ayan naman. Uh, pakita natin na nasatisfy pareha. So, it's really a straight line straight line talaga yung ginagawang trend nung ating serial killer. Okay. Oh, yun nga. Sige, explain ko na na serial killer ng straight line. So, therefore, the next step is to determine the coordinates of this point, yung intersection ng dalawang line. So, gawin natin yun, no? So, ito yung graph. Gamitin na natin si class Wiz. Okay. Paano po hahanapin yung intersection daw po ng two lines? We will use menu and then we will use equations. Equations yung pong katabi ni table, yung letter A. So, ang A po ay na kay negative sign. So, pwede nyo napapindutin si negative sign. Tatanungin po kayo, simultaneous equation or polynomial equations? So, we will be using simultaneous equations. So, sa amin po sa Europe, it's simultaneous equations. Dito po sa Pilipinas, Siya po ay systems of equations. Okay, so simultaneous equations. One. Uh, tinatanong po kayo, how many variables are involved? So since we have X and Y, we only have two variables. So press two. And then, ano yun? It should be in AX plus BY equals C form. E ano ba yung dalawang equation natin ulit? Ayan. Y is equal to 2X. So ano siya in 
uh, ax plus by equals c. So, 2x minus y equals 0. And 2x minus y, uh, 2x plus y equals 15, rather. Okay. So, gawin natin yun. Ayan, para kita si equation. So, ito, 2x minus y. So, ang coefficient x2 equals, and then ang coefficients, di ba, magiging negative y siya. So, negative 1. And then, si c is 0. So, press 0. Ah, syempre. Wala ka pang nalalagay dun sa babae. Okay. And then, ipat natin si negative 2x. So, 2x plus y equals 15. So, coefficient ni x is 2. And then, coefficient naman ni y is 1. And then, the constant is 15. Okay. 15 fourths and 15 halves. Yan po din yung lumabas, no? So, yun yung mga sagot nila. Pero, pero, pero. Ang sabi ni serial killer, may huli siyang phrase na sinabi. Balikan natin yung huling sinabi ni killer. Balikan natin yung sinabi ni killer. Ayan. So, wala pang nakakakuha ng tamang sagot. Kasi ang sabi ni Killer, ano yung sabi ni Killer? Asa na yung question natin yun? Sabi ni Killer, ayan. I will strike where the straight lines meet, but it is the whole that you must consider. Okay. <laughs> wala pang Wala pang nagbibigay ng tamang sagot. Kasi ang sabi niya, I will strike where the straight lines meet. But it is the whole that you must consider. Sige nga, oh, mag-comment na kung sino yung magbibigay ng tamang sagot. Ayan, tingnan natin. Sayang po ang cash price. Dali, yan, ako. Sayang yan. Hello, hello. Three digits din yan. Uh, from there, dapat alam nyo na ang gagawin. Kasi sabi, it should be the straight line. Okay, habang nag tayo ng comment nila, no, ng tamang sagot, how can we see the graph no? dito sa ating function? Okay. So from here, from here, ang gagawin mo, press shift and then QR. Kala siya. Shift and then QR. Ay, lumabas. Sige na nga. Ano nga ulit yung question natin? Alam, nawala yung question natin. Ah, napindot ko kasi si AC. I see you. Okay. Balik na yan. May nagko-comment na ng sagot. Sige. Tingnan na natin. Ang equation natin ulit is y is equal to 2x. So, 2x minus y. 2 equals negative 1 equals and then 0. And then... 2x plus y equals 15. So, 2 equals, 1 equals, and then 15 equals. And then equals. So, shift QR. Lalabas ang QR code. No, using your smartphones. Ayan. So, gagamit po ako ng app. No, Ito po. Ito po yung parang pinaka-screen ng aking cellphone. Kasi gagamitin gagamit ko po si Casio Edu Plus. Para mas scan yung QR code. Nung ating... Iga-graph. Ayan. Tapos, open in browser. Chrome. And then, lalabas po ang ating website ni Casio. Lalabas na po yung graph. Ayan. Online visualization. Lakihan natin. Para masaya. Ayan. So, yun po. Yung, ayan. Nakita na natin yung graph. Yung equation na 2x minus y equals to 0 and 2x plus y equals 50. Ito yun siya. Ayan siya, no? Kung tutuusin yun siya, ayan sabi, ayan sabi, daw, it is the whole that you must consider. So, saan siya malapit? Saan siya mas malapit na whole? Saan siya mas malapit na whole? Okay. Tingnan natin na yung mga comment section natin. Tingnan na natin yung comment sections. Kung sinong nakakakuha ng tamang sagot. Ayan. Kung may nakakuha na ba ng tamang sagot. Ayan. Sagot ni Sir Ray Valer Verano, 4 and 8. 
Close Anakino 3 and 7. 4 and 0, 3 and 7, 3 and 7. Ayan! Ayan, I think meron ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. So, antayin niyo po ang message, no? Mag-reply po sa inyo mamaya. Okay, at the end of course, ng ating ado, uh, discussion. O, legit po ito, ha? Legit po ito. Magbibigay po talaga ng price. No? Hindi po basta-basta ang ating sponsor today. No? Ba- para manloko tayo ng prizes. Okay. So, let's have the second case. Second case. So, dito manggagaling yung huling price natin. No? Dito manggagaling yung huling price natin. Okay. Second case. It happened one night. It happened one night. So, the next activity tries to answer the question, do relationships exist between two seemingly distinct data series? The themes addressed in the activity refer to descriptive statistics, including in particular the concepts of linear regression interpolation, and correlation between data sets. So, hindi lang descriptive stat, pati inferential stat. Okay. Sige. Ano yung mga kailangan natin? Kit material. The kit is designed for per work group. Maybe three to five members again. Of course, our cash of last week, storyboard map, meter stick pencil, and paper. Okay. Ito yung suggested time frame niya. No? If you're going to do it. The case. Let's have now the case. It happened one night. That's the title of the case. It was night of February 17. Heavy snowfall had covered... Oh, syempre sa Italy may, may, ano yun, may snowfall. Heavy snowfall had covered the ground with a thick blanket of snow. Veronica had spent the evening at her friend Anna's house. At midnight, she walked through the square back to her apartment. Located on the second floor of a block, on the other side of the square. Fortunately, it had stopped snowing about half an hour before. Unfortunately, Veronica never made it home. Her corpse was found in the early hours in the morning in the square at the point indicated by the cross on the map. So this is the map. Uh, this, is, this is where you know, uh, Veronica lived. The police immediately cordoned off the square, blocked the access streets, and began investigations. So, yan. In-enclose na siya ng cordon. No, yung yellow na cordon. Yung pag may mga crime scenes, di ba? Veronica and Samuel's house, so yung, yung letter A. So, ito yun. Bahay ni Veronica at saka ni Samuel. And then, bahay ni Sonia, ito yun. And then, bahay ni Victorio, ito yun. Bahay ni Ana, ito yun. And bahay ni Tomaso, ito yun. Samuel's news stand, ito yun. And then, the bell tower, ito yun. Okay, so ito, papuntang Mortona, papuntang Lanciloto. Okay. The first information gathered concerned the inhabitants of the houses around the square. Ver- Veronica, the victim, Samuel, the newspaper vendor, age 45, height 165 centimeters. Sonia, a physician, age 38, height 175 centimeters. Vittorio, bank employee, age 36, height 188 centimeters. Anna, Veronica's friend, age 54, height 169 centimeters. And of course, Tommaso, bell ringer in the tower in the square, age 50, height 178 centimeters. Okay. Interrogating each one of them separately, investigators collected the following information about their movements on the night in question. Samuel had left his house A and had gone to his newsstand AA. Sonia had left her house B and headed toward Via Lanciloto to start her shift at the hospital. So tingnan muna natin ulit yung map, going back to the map. So si Samuel, umalis sa bahay niya, galing sa house A, and pumunta sa newsstand na AA. Ito yun. 
house A, pumunta sa house, uh, sa new stand A, A. Okay, so, sa, siya si Samuel. Si Sonia naman, umalis sa bahay niya, house B, pumunta kay na Lanciloto. No? Headed toward via Lanciloto. Pumunta dun sa lumabas ng Lanciloto no? para sa shift niya sa hospital. So, eto yon. Ito yung pinuntahan niya. So, B. From B, no? from B, and then pumunta siya dito sa Lanciloto, palabas papunta sa hospital. Okay. Vittorio had left his house to head towards Mortona. So, pumunta naman, papunta naman Mortona. So, house C, then at cross naman ng Mortona. So, yun siya. So, pwedeng dito dumaan papunta doon. Tapos so, ito nung pumunta, papunta doon, o papunta doon, o whatsoever. And then, si C naman, dumaan papunta doon. Kasi ito yung prime scene natin. And then, Tomaso had left his house E to go to the bell tower EE. E. Tomaso, house E, to go to the bell tower EE. E. So, dadaan pa rin doon. No? May posibilidad pa rin na dumaan doon sa crime scene. The thick, the thick, the thick, my H. The thick fog that had developed made their routes erratic and prevented any of them from noticing anything strange. During their journey, Nobody came across any other footprints in the snow. None of their paths intersected with each other or with poor Veronica's path. Ayan. So, ito yung mga ano, uh, parang situations that you need to analyze to try to solve kung sinong pumatay kay Veronica. Okay, when the police arrived, the sun had melted almost all the footprints. The only place where the footprints remained was in the shade of the bell tower, close to the victim. These showed the killer's exit route. Below is a rough sketch done by the appointed officer. So, 73 centimeters. Hmm? 73 centimeters daw yung shoe size. Other information collected by the investigators. No one who was questioned has crossed the square more than once. So isang beses lang sila dumaan doon. From the shape of the footprints, it can be deduced that the killer ran to flee the scene. So tumatakbo. Okay. Of the people questioned, who is the likeliest suspect? Ayan. So, ito ang ating winning, last last winning question. No? Pinakahuling, kailangan yung masagot ng tama. Okay? Of the people questioned, who is the likeliest suspect? Ayan. Of course, we have to reason out why. Oh, my footprints. So, footprints ang ating natitirang pwedeng pagbasihan. A little theory and history, biometric identification. Identifying criminals has always been a crucial issue in the field of criminology. In the past, there was tendency to tattoo criminals in order to make them more recognizable in the future. So, yun yung reason kung bakit kapag nakukulo ka, tinatatuan ka. No? Yun pala yung reason na yun. Para kapag gumawa ulit ng crime sa susunod na pagkakataon, may palatandaan na sa'yo kasi yung tattoo. Okay. Only around 1879 did Alphonse Bertillon begin to suggest cl classification and identification methods based on a mathematical analysis of the measurements of people's physiological features. He started the process known as biometric identification. So, yun na siya. So, gagamitin natin biometric identification kasi ang natitira natin na clue is 173 centimeters. Yun yung shoe size. His proposals were based on a wide sampling of dimensions relating to the parts of the body, including height, arm span, torso measurement, and dimensions of the head, the middle toe on the left foot, and the left forearm. He observed that the probability of two people having the same measurements for all the for all of the anatomical areas considered was extremely low. Thus, 
proposing a new classification method for humans. So, napakaliit ng probability na magkakaparehas ng measurements yung, yung mga binanggit na measurements ng katawan kanina. The method yielded good results as long as the criminal database was populated with data from new prisoners, but after around 10 years, it was discovered that it, if people who had never been in prison could present similar, present similar characteristics, if not indeed identical to those of the criminals. The system was abandoned at the start of 1900s due to a more efficient method developed by the, by the, by the physician Henry Folds and the statistician Francis Galton, fingerprints naman. Okay, ang ginamit. Over time, Biometric has implemented new techniques to meet its people identification and authentication objectives, DNA analysis, retina and iris scanning, hand structure, facial feature recognition, ear shape, body odor, brain imprints, signature dynamics, voice verification, lip imprint. So yun naman siya. Ito na yung mga bago. Okay. One of the characteristic signs that the investigators look for at crime scenes are footprints because they contain a lot of information about the subject who has left them. Sometimes a footprint footprint from a shoe can prove useful in determining and tracing the subject's routes on the crime scene. Second, determining the approximate height and weight of a person. Kasi kung mabigat, mas mabigat yung, mas malalim yung, or mas purpose, ayun, mas baon yung footprint. And then, sabi nga natin, related daw yung haba ng shoe size, or haba ng paa sa height ng tao. And third, establishing gender, age, and other features. Studying the running mode. Siyempre kasi, bakit kaya ma-establish yung gender, age, and other features? Kasi, mas malapad daw ang paa ng lalaki kesa sa girls. Diba? Tignan mo na lang sa mga sapatos, diba? Pag nagawa ng sapatos. Mas malapad ang sa boys. Studying the running, the running mode. Someone with a fast gait, a heavy person. Someone moving backward, turning, limping, etc. Okay, this analysis does not fall fully into the field of biometrics as it does not identify a two-way relationship between anatomical features and the person who processes them. It does, however, allow more generic correlations to be highlighted which can be very useful. Okay, data analysis is statistics. One very useful tool for biomet biometric analysis is the descriptive stat, that is the area of statistics that deals with information regarding a sample of studied population and describes the fundamental characteristics of it through indices. Ano yung mga index na yun? Indices na yun, rather. Average values, statistic, statistical relationships, etc. Tables and graphs in an effective manner. Results obtained in this way can define givens except for measuring errors for the whole population. Okay, let's have a preparatory activity. Requires the use of linear regression in order to obtain useful information for solving the case. Linear regression, oh, alam na natin yung mga math. So, ayan, correlated na siya. Okay. An example application of this technique. It aims to check the following hypothesis. The length of, a, bakit kailangan natin itong activity na to? Kasi, ito siya. No? The length of a person's forearm is proportional to the shoe size. Yun yung gusto natin itry na patunayan no, sa activity na to. First thing to do is to identify a sample. No? Alam na natin yun. The size of sample. The number of people na kukuha na natin ng samples. Kung ilan. No? Bilang. And the representativeness of important elements because the results can be relevant for the whole population. No? So, pwedeng babae, lalaki. In our case, we are limiting ourselves to the population of students in a school. And we are choosing students in a class as the representative sample. So sa classroom ka lang kukuha. Kasi kung may face-to-face -face na. Kasi diba, ang ano to, uh, ina-assume niya na may face-to-face -face setup. No? Kung ano naman, eh di magsukatan sila sa bahay. Kung, kung, dahil ngayon, diba? Ano naman tayo, uh, online, di ba? Kasi nga, walang face-to-face. -face. Kung online, di 
eh, grupo mo sila, no? And then, hingin mo yung data ng bawat isa. Halimbawa, ako, sisend ko yung uh, shoe size ko at saka yung height ko dun sa classmate ko. Tapos, uh, mangungulekta ko na mangungulekta ng mga sample sa makakaklase ko para meron akong data. Ganun. Two measurements must be taken from each individual in the sample. Length of their forearm and their shoe size. Form. Okay, next. So, the data collected in a table. So, parang ganito lang yung sample. And sample lang po ito, no? Sample lang po siya. Okay. So, using our class, please. Okay. Enter natin yung data. So, let mo na kita. Okay. Ayan. So, gagamit tayo ng statistics. Okay, menu. And then, statistics is 6. Okay, tatanungin ka. One variable ba? Okay, two variable ba? Na linear in nature. And then, yung quadratic. Okay, meron ding natural logarithmic. So, meron tayong two variables. Linear lang na two variables. So, press 2. So, enter the 15 samples. Okay, so you have 26.7. 26.7 equals 25.4 equals 29.2 equals and 26.7 equals 29.2 equals okay 25.7 equals uh, 28.3 equals 26.4 equals 28.9 equals 24.9 equals 26.9 equals 25.7 equals 29.3 equals 25.4 equals 27.8 equals. And then using arrow keys, para mapunta naman tayo dun sa Y column, you have 37.5 and then 37.5 again and then 41 and then 36.5 and then 41 and then 36 and then 39. And then 37, and then 40, and then 35, and then 38, and then 36, and then 40, and then 36, and then 39. Okay. Huh? Wala siya. Dalawang 36, so dapat 39. Ayan, mali ako lang pindot. Ayan. So once entered na yung ating data. Okay, so anong gusto natin gawin? So let us try to see this in a graph. So, using ulit ating QR code. Ay, hindi na siya connected. Bakit hindi siya na connected? Ayan. So, QR code natin, ano? So, shift and then options, QR. And then scan natin using our cell phones. So, eto ah, eto ay... Parang naka-mirror yung aking cellphone sa aking laptop. Cash Edu Plus, QR code. So, makikita din talaga na yung sudyante yung ginagawa. Ayan, scan natin yung code. And then, choose Open Browser. And then, Chrome. Open and Chrome. Magbubukas ang website ni Casio with the graph ng ating function. I mean, ng ating uh, data. So, ay, ito yung ating table, no? So, binigay din ni Cash yung table natin. Lakayan pa natin. Pwede pa naman lakayan. Ayan. And this is our scatter graph. No? This is our scatter graph. But somehow, no? Parang makikita mo na parang nagpo-fall lang siya sa isang straight line. No? So, yun yung ma-observe natin. Somehow, parang nagpo-fall siya into straight line. So, observing that, ano pwede natin sabihin? So, na-observe natin. Displaying data in a graph is often a very useful. Ayan na natin, na graph natin. Okay. Nagawa na natin, nag-graph na natin. The points are not distributed normally. There appears to be a relationship between them. On average, the longest forearms corresponds to the biggest shoe size. With some degree of approximation, we can state the points on the graph are distributed around a straight line. Y is equal to Bx plus A which crosses through them, and we can say that the equation of this straight line mathematically, mathematically describes a possible relationship between the data. Diba? O, balikan natin yung graph. Balikan natin yung graph. O, diba? Yan yung sinasabi. Somehow, 
parang it falls into a straight line. Yun yung sinasabi natin dito. Okay. Sumobra na naman yata ako ng pinto. Okay. Ayan. Naka-animation pala siya. Okay. Mathematically describe the possible ratio of the data. No? The equation of the straight line is, paano ko nakuha itong straight line na ito? Yung equation ng straight line ko na, y is equal to 1.2, x is equal to, uh, plus 5.9 rather. Okay. Saan natin nakuha yan? Balik tayo kay class with. Okay. Press options. And then press regression calculation. That's number four. Ayan, no? Binigay na sa atin yung best fit line. Y is equal to A plus BX. Ano si A? 5.9 and so on. And then B, 1.18 and so on. And then your um, correlation coefficient R, which is 0.95. Okay? So, uh, pag, uh, pag tawag dito, kapag nag-round off tayo into one, uh, decimal unit, or one decimal place rather, yung A natin is 5.9, kaya plus 5.9. So, yun kasi siya, di ba? A plus BX, or BX plus A. So, your B, the numerical coefficient of X na B, is 1.2. And then, your A is 5.9. So, the best fit line for the distribution, no, yung nasa table natin, is this one. Y is equal to 1.2X plus 5.9. And then, yung ating correlation coefficient is 0.95. So, somewhat close, no? Very close to 1. So, somehow, we are relatively confident that the equation describes the relationship between the data. No? Somewhat, no? Relatively confident tayo na magpo-fall talaga doon siya. Okay. Next. If we know the measurement, of a person's forearm that is 29 centimeters, is it possible to gain an idea of the size of the footprint? Pwede ba? Pwede ba yun? Siyempre, galing, na, meron na tayong relationship eh. So, magpe-predict tayo. So, paano tayo magpe-predict? So, from, uh, from this table, no, press AC, ito dapat lalabas. Okay? Meron tayong given value na X that is 29. So, press 29. Ang hinahanap natin, si y hat. So, saan natin makukuha si y hat? So, we wanted to predict the length ng ano eh, footprint, di ba? So, press options, okay? And then, arrow down. So, hahanapin natin si regression. Si regression ay number 4, so press 4. So, ayun si y hat, si number 5. So, press 5. When we press equals, so, yun yung... <laughs> footprint mo. No? 40 point something centimeters. So, yun yung footprint na may iwan. Kung ang forearm ng isang tao ay 29 centimeters. Base doon sa relationship na nakuha natin kanina. Okay. So, let's have an activity. So, this is a suggested activity after the Routines that we did. Activity. In the following activity, we want to check whether correlations exist between the following pairs of measurements. So, estudyante yung papagawain natin dito. Okay, estudyante yung papagawain natin dito. The shoe size of a person and the length of the stride. Height of the person and the length of the stride. Height of a person and their shoe size. Length of a per person's forearm and the length of their foot. The length of a person's stride and the length of their leg. Sir, ano po ba yung stride? No? In the first place, ano po ba yung stride? Yun yung hakbang. Okay, yung sukat ng pagkakahakbang niya. Yun siya. Okay? Knowing the possible link exists between these measurements, an investigator has a tool and had to gather some information about the anatomy of the killer, starting with the footprints. Um, okay. So, yun yung gagawin ng mga bata. No? Ito yung suggested table. Ayan. Meter stick, mi minsan mas maganda daw gamitin yung medida. No? <laughs> Kasi ano siya, um, tawag dito, yung mas flexible daw si medida. Okay. Bahala kayo kung anong gusto niyo gamitin. Basta masusukat. Okay. 
So, ito yung suggested table natin. So, student 1, 2, 3, and blah, blah, blah. And then, height in centimeters. Shoe size, no? And then, length of stride in centimeters. Length of forearm in centimeters. Siguro, gamitin mo na lang din yung shoe size na in centimeters. Para ano din? Yung, yung haba na lang din ng pa. Kasi, yung, sa, sa ibang bansa, di ba yung shoe size yung 44, 40, 39, no? Eh, ako hindi ko naintindihan kung ano yun. <laughs> ano ba yung 40 na yun? Okay. It is necessary to define a method, a conversion, convention, so that everybody operates in the same manner and has the same benchmark. This, there needs to be a single measurement protocol. So, yun nga. Single measurement protocol. Centimeters. Kung lahat centimeters, four centimeters. No? Para magkaroon tayo ng ano, uniform, uniformity. Okay. Yun po. Suggested po na gagawin. So, bakit kailangan din gawin to? Kasi, eto yung magsasuggest doon sa investigator na totoong mataas ang relationship ng person's forearm at saka length ni foot. Yung, yung haba ng hakbang niya at sa haba ng legs niya. Yung height ng tao at saka ng haba ng paa. Yung height ng tao at saka yung haba ng hakbang niya. At the same time, yung haba ng paa niya at saka yung haba din ng hakbang niya. May mga relationship kasi yon Okay. Eh, pero dahil nga, we want our students to be our investigators. So, yun siya. Okay. So, yun yung gagawin natin. Okay. After that, ano yung pwede mong itanong sa mga estudyante? How is the data arranged on the graph? No? Kasi yun yung Gusto natin makita doon sa scatter plot, may ma-observe ba sila na medyo magpo-fold ba sila into a line? Parang gano'n. Why is it not aligned exactly a, stro- a straight line? Eh, Siyempre, malamang, no? alam natin yung reason na hindi naman talaga lahat is exactly magpo-fold na straight line. Kasi iba-iba pa rin naman yung proportion ng katawan natin. What is the equation of the straight line that best describes the data distribution? So, so ito lang yung parang mga questions para mag-analyze talaga yung mga estudyante natin with the results that we were able to obtain. Okay? What is the value of the coefficient? R? Is it possible to use the mathematical equations to make the predictions? No? Kasi kung mataas ang relationship, no? Pearson R relationship, no? Di pwede natin magamit as mathematical predictor, no? For example, is it possible to determine a person's height from the, their shoe size or from the length and blah, 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 blah. Can there be any criticism about the validity? Blah, blah. Okay. Solution. So, ito na siya. From after the activity, ito na yung lalabas. There are two possibilities. Tomaso passes behind the news stand in order to go to EE, in which case it was Vittorio who found the victim. Tomaso passes in front of the news stand, in which case he, it is he who finds the victim. First possibility, Tomaso passes behind the newsstand, AA. In this case, it is Vittorio who found the victim. So, ito yung route. No? Ayan yung nasa map. Yung second possibility naman na sinasabi, ito naman siya. Okay. Ay, ala! Na-reveal ko na yung sagot! Balik, balik! Hindi, <laughs> ayaw mo na nga. Sige, sino na yung una mag-comment ng sagot? Siya yung mananalo ng cash price natin. Sige. So, ito yung second possibility. Tomaso passes in front of the news stand AA. In this case, it is Tomaso who found the victim. Use the results obtained in the pre preparatory activity on the height and person's length of the of their stride from the statistical sample in the class. Supposing that the relationship... Okay, may nagko-comment na sagot. Supposing that the relationship identified is applicable in general, estimate the killer's height from the footprints left and compare it to the height of the two suspects. No. Kasi at sino yung dalawang suspect natin? Vittorio and Tommaso. Pero, sino ang ating killer talaga? Okay. So, tingnan natin kung may mag-comment ng ating sagot, ng tamang sagot. Ayan siya. Okay. Meron ako nakita ng sumagot. Sir Glenn Ibanez, Ginongos, Vittorio. Okay. And then si Sir Raymond Bautista de Jesus Tomaso. 
Okay, so meron nang nakakuha kasi dalawa lang naman yung suspect natin. Hindi syempre meron nang nakakuha na tapos. Okay, so these are the two cases that we have. Now, yung third case po ay ano, part na sa part 2. Sa part 2 po siya. Okay, before I give you back to to Sir Bads, no, I, I'll give you some parting words for this session. No? We all use math every day. To predict weather, to tell time, to handle money. Math is more than formulas or equations. It's logic, it's rationality, it's using your mind to solve the biggest mysteries we know. Okay? So, from there, talagang araw-araw ginagamit natin si math. Without knowing it, math, no, ang buhay natin araw-araw. Okay, and with that, thank you po for for enjoying somehow. Sana in-enjoy nyo talaga yung ating session for today. And abangan nyo po kung kailan po yung ano, part 2 ng ating The World by the Numbers. And with this, I'll give you back to Sir Bads Manansala. Sir Bads. Okay. Hello, Sir Duffy. Hello, Hello Sir Rinaldo. Sorry. Good morning. <laughs> Oh, I am so thank you very much, Sir Ray, for that very uh, comprehensive discussion about your topic this morning. And tula na kagawa natin before we proceed with our uh, guest commentator this morning. Let us have our educational unit head, Mr. Joel Serrano. Joel. Hi, good morning, sir, buddy, sir, sir Torres. The very, very, very nice presentation. Hi, kamusta kayo? Medyo, I'm not feeling well today, pero yeah. I, I'm talagang pinilit ko para makasama sa, sa discussion. Eh, no? uh, sir Torres, meron pa lang pa un in question dito para sa'yo. Hello, wag mahirap. <laughs> uh, uh, ito po yung tanong. Sa isang ambulansya daw, ilan po ang normal na sakay? Ah, yeah. uh, hindi pa ako nasakay na ambulansya. <laughs> Siyempre, yung driver, nasa driver seat. No? Pag walang driver, daw po kasi yan. Ha? Ano yan, sir? Investigation din kasi yan, diba? Data science din. Ah, yes. Tapos, yung parang isang ano nurse, no parang yung isang nurse na mag aasa sa loob, uh, uh, isang magbibigay ng first aid. Uh, Tapos yung isa parang helper na magiging katabi ng driver. Uh, Ayan po. Uh, po. Uh, po. Sir Buddy, ano ako? po ang sagot? Ilan po, uh, ilan po ang sakay, Sir Buddy? Pili ka 100, Sir Joel. Ilan ba? 100, Sir Tony. Ha? Huh? Talaga? Oo. Oh. Oh. Paano nangyari yun? Kasi 50 yung sakay eh. 50-50 eh, yung sakay. Eh, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, maraming salamat Mr. Torres and congratulations na itawid natin tong The World by the Numbers Part 1. No? Uh, sa mga participants, I hope nag-enjoy nag kayo. And yung mga nanalo, paki-screenshot nga natin Mr. Torres kung sino yung nanalo. No? Uh, yes, hindi ko nakita ko kung sino yung mga nanalo later. Hindi ko ma-screenshot okay. kasi ano, <laughs> nagpe-present ako eh. Uh, Ay, balikan po. na lang natin mamaya yeah. kung, ano, kung sino video. yung uh, sa mga sa recorded video kung sino nanalo. Anyway, Sir Buddy, itong The World by the Numbers is basically a series adaptation ng Casio Italia. Ito sa phenomenon sa okay. Italy. Ang ginawa ng Casio Italia, inikot nila yung buong Italy to present it sa mga teachers. It was very successful. And we're also planning to do so. Eh, kaya nga, Sabi ko nga, kung may mga teachers na gustong sumali doon sa, sa ganyang write-ups, kung meron kayo mga materials na about mystery, about crimes, yun, pwede nyo i-share sa amin. Tapos let's talk about it para magkaroon tayo ng localized. Kasi di ba siyempre, yeah. mas maganda yung parang Cardo Dalisay, yung mga dating na gano'n eh. One, one, one taba, di mga gano'ng bana. Mas localized, natural, ano, tatawag nga. So congratulations, Mr. Torres. And, Sa part 2, ah, abangan natin ulit yung mga tricks ni yeah. Sir Torres. Sir Tony, yung pala yun, no? may mga connection yung mga paa-paa at mga arms, limbs pala. Yes, yes so, po. Kasi 
uh, meron pong proportion po ang katawan. Pati po yung sukat, yung placement ng mata, tsaka po ng bibig, tsaka ng ilong sa mukha, meron po yung proportion na sinusunod. Uh, kaya, now, now I wonder, kasi nung college ako, way back college, ang dami yung sumusukat ng pa ako. Hmm. Hindi ko alam bakit. Na eh, idea. Na naman to. Kasi <laughs> Anyway. Ay, sorry. <laughs> ah, that's uh, the reality pala. Na. Yes. Anyway, so, uh, Sir Buddy, um, yeah. meron tayong mga special guest na in-invite, no? Yes, sir. Na magpapa, you know, to spice up discussion. No? Hindi yeah. alam ni Mr. Torres, no? Hindi nga. That's Wala nga <laughs> Okay, so for our first guest this morning, let us welcome our Senior Education Program Specialist from Teaching and Learning Division, Bureau of Learning Delivery, Dep and Central Office. Let's all welcome Mr. Mark Timothy Manawis. Hopefully, correct yung pag-pronounce ko. Hello, Sir Mark Timothy. Hello, good morning. Good morning, <laughs> good morning Sir Mark. Okay, ang galing ni ano. First, I would like to recommend Eh, tama ba, Torres? Yes po. No. Yes po. Okay, sino si Jill yung basa kanina? <laughs> okay, so from Teneheros National High School po, tama po, sir. Yes po, sir. Okay, so first I would like to recommend you for the, syempre ang mathematical models talaga. Uh, naging part din ako ng training ng F- MTAP. Isa sa mga training ng MTAP is mathematical investigation and mathematical modeling. No? So it's very nice that uh, the way you presented it step by step. And then there is, uh, okay, uh, you, uh, yung may mga questions lang ako no? at saka suggestions. So before I proceed to, proceed to the questions is I would like to have the suggestions. No? Yung allow us as part of our K-12 curriculum, we should be allowing the learners to be uh, using the constructivist approach. So sa pag-integrate ng technology, uh, napakahalaga ng constructivist approach. Kasi yun yung nasa RA91 uh, uh, uh in this RA natin okay na kung saan na dapat constructivism yung approach natin sa paggamit ng integration so and then the to uh the four C's of the 21st century skills so syempre hindi mo may illustrate yan pagdating sa <laughs> sa ganitong seminar or sa ganitong webinar so pero yun yung magiging suggestion at nabanggit na rin ni sir na umuunlad sa si Joel ni Sir Joel, okay, yung tungkol sa localization. So, it's very nice to localize it kasi may hirapan ang mga bata na maintindihan. But always remember that before, uh, before uh, napakahalaga yung localization before globalization. So, from localization, so para maintindihan nila, then pwede na natin ipasok yun sa globalized perspective. Then also, uh, napakaganda po ng forensic science dahil na pagdating sa ano. Uh, we have seen that in Singapore that one of the uh, collaboration of the teachers uh, to do or one of their clubs uh, extra time or extra subject na ina-add nila kasi meron silang dinadagdag na isang subject. It's a collaborative approach where teachers help each other in a specific interest ng mga students and one of which is forensic science. Yung collaboration ng, uh, di ba, may, nakita mo yung mga information, yan, papasok si English. And then, uh, so yung meron collaboration, that is may science, which is the droplets, kaya yung pumasok yung physics or yung science doon. Okay, yung paggamit ni ether, Okay, hindi si ether na ano sa ano, pero yung paggamit ng ether para maka ma, mahimatay sila o oh, mahilo, okay? So yun yung mga paggamit ng ganun. Kaya it is also a precaution for students na hindi basta lang kapin ng ether. Na, di ba yung mga interested yung mga bata, no? So sobra nilang ano active, no? Okay. So the question would be, uh, how would you uh, uh what what would be the things that you recommend for the teachers when preparing for integrating the class or the software from Casio. 
that's the first question okay and then the second question what would be your advice to those teachers with little or no experience in presenting a mathematical model i like you the siempre magaling ka na mga experts ka kayo no in the normal curve of expertise in teaching meron lang tayong a few mga 20% or less pero most of our teachers are not 100% capable of that and kung tutulungan tayo ni Sir Joel baka maging 100% yun okay so that's the second question and then the last question okay how would you demonstrate okay this for lower sections or the average students okay into mathematical models because it is something interesting analyze analytical pero ang siempre ang uh, you know that you are in the public sector uh, in a public school system you know what what type of students we have so yeah. how would we do demonstrate and what would be the approach or your suggestions to the approach of helping those students who are not first mathematically inclined and other disabilities that they have and other factors na of average students would encounter diba okay thank you sir please in love with question uh, first question is sir uh paano daw po siya paano po siya ma-integrate po uh, Apa, preparation of teachers for integrate so First po, uh, uh, on my part, yung, uh, si-share ko po yung experience ko. Siyempre po nung at first, hindi ko pa masyadong kabisado yung functions ni, ni technology kahit po yung, for example, kahit po yung sa cellphone na app or kahit po na sa application or software sa bagong, la, sa bagong software application sa laptop, mga ganun po. At first, hindi ko po talaga siya alam pa. So, ang alam ko lang is how I, yung, yung parang knowledge po dun sa subject matter na ituturo ko. So ang ginawa ko po is inaral ko po yung functions, no, yung mga features ni for example ni classwise, inaral ko po siya. And then from there, inisip ko na po paano ko ipapasok yung mga lessons dun sa features na merong available si classwise. For example po, I wanted to observe po yung behaviors ng exponents when multiplying monomials with the same base. So meron po ano na topic Uh, meron pong feature si Classwise na yung prime factorization. So from there, kung ma-observe po ng bata, for example, 2 cubed times 2 squared, ang lalabas kasi kay Classwise is 32. And when when you use the prime factorization, magiging 2 raised to the fifth power siya. And then from there, tatanungin, tatanungin ko po yung mga estudyante, oh, what do you observe about the basis? Sir, they all have the same basis, which is 2. And then what happened to the exponents? So it's somewhat like na-add po yung exponents kasi 2 and 3 and then the exponent of the result is 5. So parang in-add po yung 2 and 3 and then you have 5. So parang ganun po. So from there po, so mako-construct po yung idea ng bata na when you are multiplying monomials with the same base, you just add the exponents. So parang ganun siya. So that's the first thing I did po that I, I somehow must share ko sa mga teachers is to really study first no features kahit ano pong available na gadgets that you will have. No? So, kung, kung classes po, meron sila, aralin po nila yung features ni classes para alam po nila when is the perfect timing kung kailan ipapasok si technology in introducing a topic even during uh, mga ano po, mga activities po, just like this. Po, yung pinresent ko na activity kanina. Kasi yung, yung activities po na pinresent ko kanina, hindi po siya for introducing topics. So, so parang mga exercises na po siya during na na lesson na yung mga uh, competencies that they should have. So, yun po. But uh, kasi po, ako po talaga naniniwala. Katulad ko rin sabi, yung constructivism approach po talaga. So kung si teacher po talaga, well uh, rounded po talaga siya in terms of technology and, 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 and of course knowledgeable talaga siya sa topic na dapat niya i-discuss, mahahalo niya po yun eh. May isip niya po talaga kung kailan ipapasok. Now, leading po doon sa second question niyo, sir, Paano po kung hindi po talaga ako ganang kasabilong doon sa upper 20%, no? Ah, uh, meron po tayo mga meron po kung ako teachers, no? Na uh, share for experience na hindi ko na banggitin yung pangalan siya. Siyempre, wag na. Ah, uh, ang ginagawa niya po kasi, dahil season teacher na siya, no? Siyempre, pag mga season teacher, medyo takot sa technology. 
So, ang ginagawa po namin sa kanya is uh, meron po siyang kabadi talaga. Banggitin ko na po yung kabadi niya. Ito siya yung tumutulong. Ay, Ma'am Jopay, Argiles. Ayan. Siya po yung kabadi-badi niya na talagang ina-assist siya kapag meron kaming mga training regarding po sa uh, technology integrations. Yun po. So, every time na may tanong siya, no, pwede magtanong sa amin or sa kabadi niya regarding how to use the technology. Ganun po. So, Uh, ang moto po namin sa department po namin, sa school namin, huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Hindi po ako nagpo-promote ng brand ng gamot. No? <laughs> Pero yun po yung laging sinasabi namin kasi ang moto namin, huwag mahihiyang magtanong kasi mas nakakatakot magturo ng mali. So yun po siya. Uh, kaya po yun, nagtatanungan po kami. So yung uh, PLC po sa amin no, is lagi pong evident professional learning community no lagi po kami nag PPLC within the grade level sometimes no nagco cross uh, levels din po kami para po we can talk po no we can share po ano yung mga magagandang bagay na pwede po namin na maibahagi din sa isa sa yun po and yung last question niyo sir ano nga po ulit yung last question nakalimutan ko po sir uh, how would you demonstrate your lesson for normal or average learners yeah. yun yun po no kaya pa importante po niyan kasi Uh, nagahawak po ako ng extreme sections no sa sa 15 years po na nagturo po ako sa government po no sa public schools lagi pong extreme sang hawak ko I've been handling section 23 and then section 1 ganun po so syempre alam po natin iba-iba po ang capacity niyan I, I always say sa lahat po ng seminar po na kinokonda ko the teacher is the manager of the classroom he should know the abilities ng students kasi iba-iba yung abilities niya you know? Ang lesson plan, maaaring generic siya for all. Pero yung approach, sa pinaka-approach, when you face the students, maiiba pa rin talaga. Kasi at different sections, different levels. Kung mag, for example, sa section 1, for example, yung activity po na pinresent ko, konting paliwanag ng directions lang yung ibibigay mo. But when when you go to the, sa, yung medyo nasa laylayan ng ano, sections, uh, yun po yung mas kailangan ng gabay So, talagang uunti-untiin po na explanation. Mas kailangan nyo pong mag-ikot-ikot kung naka-group po talaga sila to give assistance. And then somehow, kung, kung doon sa higher section, present mo, ito yung process, blah, 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 and then magmamonitor ka na. Sa lower sections, as in talagang hihimay-himayin mo pa rin po. Although you have there the directions in the activity sheets, what will be done, you still need to supervise those students. Para kung sama may mag-pop up na question na, Sir, paano po ulit ito? You can still give directions to the students. So, importante po talaga ang teachers. Ngayon pong hindi po tayo face-to-face, uh, ako po kasi I've been handling ano po, hybrid po na classes. So, ibig sabihin, nagmo-module po sila and then they can reach me through messenger, o, through chat, ganyan po, or through text messaging. So, medyo mahirap po magbigay na system. But somehow, no, nagbibigay pa rin po tayo ng feedback no, sa mga institusyante kung paano po yung gagawin po sa kanilang mga projects. Ayun po, sir. Sana po medyo nasagot po yung tanong po. Thank you, sir. Sana po ganyan din ang mga pananaw ng ano. Okay. Uh, last na, no. So, yung ano kasi, uh, yung, pero ngayon accepted na kasi yung RETI na, no. Pero ang usual noon, ang pronunciation niya is RET na. Okay, yeah. nung back na mga 2010s. 2010s yeah. backward. Ngayon kasi nag-evolve ang language. Ina- yeah. Ina-accept na yung retin na. So, pero dati kasi nagtatalo kami yan. Ret na lagi. Ang, <laughs> uh, ret na lang siya. Silent eye. Ret na. And then yung ano, inintay ko talaga yung sabihin mo yung line of best fit. For raw, da- for raw datas, talaga pag sa science, uh, we recommend, talaga, uh, we always do the line of best fit or best fit line. Kasi, uh, yun talaga kasi well, wala kang raw data na makikita na 100% lalo na sa na, sa uh, na magpo-fall na mag uh, ano talaga pare-parehas na agad na automatic. So to determine the relationship, ginagamit talaga ng mga statistician at the same time mathematicians and uh, scientists yung best fit line. And then overall, uh, salamat po sa ano mo napakagandang presentation and uh, sa yung ano I'm excited to be to be watching you or 
viewing your classroom. It's so it's so exciting. And then also the yung pananaw mo is very growth. Yung mindset mo is a uh, growth mindset na talagang uh, sana ganyan na lahat ng teachers uh, hindi humihinto sa pag-improve ng kanilang sarili at saka pag-adapt sa new technology. Lalo na ngayon in the midst of the uh, pandemic no in COVID-19 no. At lalo na mahirap yung ating mga sitwasyon ngayon. Very thankful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Torres. Thank you, Sir. Sir Buds, naka-mute ka. Ayan. Thank you, Sir Timothy, for that very comprehensive uh, uh, insights and suggestions about our topic. And talagang kakatapos na ng Miss Universe ang mga tanong ni Sir, parang nabigyan <laughs> Sir Taki. Pero talagang wedding ready si Sir Taki. At si Sir Reynaldo. At talagang napakaganda ng kanyang explanation about this topic. And alam ko yung iba sa atin, nag-look forward na sila sa ating part 2. Pero bago tayo mag-proceed sa ating part 2, let's have our next guest teacher, a teacher from the Ed Tagig Pateros Division, a co-em top scholar of Mr. Reynaldo. Let's all welcome teacher Nali Malvarosa. Hello, ma'am. Hello, good afternoon sa inyo pong lahat, Sir Buds, Sir Timothy, Sir Tony, Sir Hello. Joel. Hello po. Ayan, so nakakatuwa po itong ating webinar series na ito kasi uh, personally, ang, ang ano, na-appreciate ko talaga siya kasi um, actually mahilig ako sa mga ano eh, sa mga Sherlock Holmes type na mga problems. Kasi nung high school ako, mahilig talaga ako magbasa ng mga Sherlock Holmes. And napansin ko yung mga present na problem, talagang ma-engage ka na itry mong isolve. Tapos, uh, ang kagandahan nito, with the use of casho uh, uh, class with, talagang ang, ano, ang engaging niya, especially na from uh, gathering the data, yung mga information, yung mga clues, and then yung, uh, yung mga, kung paano mo siya isosolve at ipepresent. Napakaganda. At naka appreciate ko talaga yung mga graphs talaga. Kasi as in may visual representation. Kasi may mga bata tayo na talagang more on visuals. ba Mas na-appreciate nila kapag naka-present talaga sa kanila. So ang ganda. Congratulations, Sir Tony. And looking forward sa ano sa part 2. Aabangan ko talaga yan. Kasi gusto ko siyang gamitin sa ano rin. Kasi ngayon, di ba meron na tayong assessment ngayon sa set up kasi natin ngayon, yung performance task na tinatawag nga nila na pwede mo tong i-adapt eh. Actually, yung tama nga rin yung nabanggit ni Sir Timothy na pwede mo siyang i-localize, no? i-modify mo lang siya, tapos i-ano mo, tsaka mo i-input or i-integrate yung mga concepts. So, kagaya nung isang beses na ginawa ko kasi yung na-handle kong mga studyante, mga regular students, hindi talaga sila masyadong ano, mga grade 7, behawa ka kung grade 7, grade 8. So yun, uh, ang topic kasi namin, operations on integers. Pag nagpe-present ka na ng mga rules, hindi nila masyadong na-appreciate. Pero nung ginamit, sabi ko, o tingnan nyo itong nasa calculator. Try natin yung mga examples. So kasi dinownload ko yung class yun na class with emulator. Talagang, ay ganun pala yun, ma'am. Ang galing pala. Also, kahit gumagamit kayo ng calculator, hindi ibig sabihin na, na ang target mo lang is makuha yung answers. But also yung concept, kailangan ma-build natin. Kasi itong, itong mga concepts na to sa grade 7, ma-apply niyan kasi spiral yung curriculum natin na ma-apply mo siya sa grade 8, sa grade 9, up to mag high school or college ka. Kaya kung gusto kasi nila na walang mat daw eh, di ba? Sir Tony, yung mga gusto ng mga bata. Ma ano po bang mga courses ang walang mat? Sabi ko, wala kayong mahahanap na ganun kasi may mat lahat ng mga courses. So kahit hindi siya ganun katulad ng mga calculus type na mga talagang mas advanced or mga talagang may complex na mga topics, at least may mga basic mat pa rin. So wala pa rin ka wala. Ayun. So ang, ang ganda na, at ang ganda, gusto ko siyang itry talaga doon sa performance task kasi nagpaplano na ako na mag-gumawa ng performance task. Actually, sa school namin, ayan, uh, ma-share ko lang din na nag, ano, si-share kami ng mga best practices na rin na ginagawa namin. Kasi lalo ngayon, pag online learning, di ba, uh, kailangan talaga makapag-integrate tayo. So, hindi lang basta may PowerPoint presentation, 
okay na siya, pero maganda rin yun na may ini-integrate pa tayong other uh, uh, software or applications na pwede natin gamitin para dun sa specific na beso natin. Kaya, ganda po. Sir Joel, aabang ko yung second ano nyo, ha? yung part two. Kailangan, oh, ano yan. <laughs> Ayon, congratulations po. And uh, ayon, salamat Sir Tony sa pag-share ng iyong ano, grabe, talagang nakakatuwa kasi yung tinatry ko talaga siyang isolve kasi ginagamitan ko na siya kanina ng calculator, yung mga regression. Ayun, kaya kailangan talaga i-attendan natin itong mga type ng mga webinars kasi natututo tayo eh. Paano natin siya i-share sa ating estudyante kung hindi natin alam mismo sa ating sarili kung paano siya gamitin? So with that, talagang ang dami ko natutunan. Tinatry ko isoob kanina, muntik na akong makalusot dun sa ano eh. Na, nakalimutan ko yung clue, hindi ko nabalikan yung question. Yung kailangan pala whole number yung kanina dun sa my killer. So ko yan, kasi mga Sherlock Holmes type, yung mga ano, talagang maganda, engaging siya. I'm sure magugustuhan ng mga bata. Thank you. Yes. That's great. Thank you, Sir Nali. Talagang <laughs> yung mga teachers talaga natin here, in, here sa ating webinar sa kasya, talagang hindi lang sila mga basta math teacher, talagang very, ano eh, in, um, mga awardee, kung di man mga awardee, is recipient ng mga scholarship grants. And ibig sabihin lang yan, there's a culture of excellence sa kasya tech webinar session. Siyempre, sa so, pangunguna yan ng ating educational unit head, Mr. Joel Serrano. Yes. And at this point, yes. Mr. Joel, no? dan na tayo sa ating dalawang guest, uh, guest this morning. Siguro let's have our last few words and messages from our guests. Let's start with Ma'am Nali. Ma'am Nali, any last words? Um, ayun. Um, so, thank you so much pala. Oh, by the way, kay Sir Joel, na, 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 thank you sa pag-invite sa akin to be part nitong ano webinar series kasi uh, naka-engaging and at the same time. Tapos Sir Tony, ayun, looking forward sa susunod ng mga webinars. And gusto ko lang siguro i-ano na, i-share ko lang yung favorite quote ko uh, by Archimedes. So sabi niya, mathematics reveals its secrets only to those who approach it with pure love for its own beauty. So, yun yung isa sa mga paborito kong mga math quotations. Yan. Thank you. Salamat po sa kasyo. Ayan. Thank you, Ma'am Nali. And at this point, let's have Mr. Reynaldo Torres. Hello po. Uh, I hope you really learned po sa today's session. And see you again sa part 2. God bless. Stay safe. Thank you, Sir Ray. And let's have Sir Joel Serrano. Hi, uh, yun, ang sa akin lang, see you again next next episode. Pam Nali, magbarawasan mo rin, salamat sa, sa pag-guest and sir, uh, sir Mark Timothy Manawis. Mga mga babait niya, mga kaibigan natin sa Akadin. Um, ano ba sasabihin ko? Let me spill the bean, no? Siguro, yung mga teachers na math teachers na kung gusto nyo ng challenge, Abangan nyo yung aming Casio Math Competition for Teachers Online Edition. So, malapit na yan. So, we're just finalizing some, you know, mechanics. We will let you know. Dito rin sa ETU. Maraming salamat. And see you again next week. Kung if you need yung mga special software namin, you can just simply visit edu.casio.com to download the emulators. And if you want to, uh, to have our calculators, you can go and visit our Facebook page. It's cash, uh, cashucalculatorsphilippines.com. Yung mga available information doon. And we'll be ready to. So maraming salamat, Sir Buddy. So Sir Mark C, maraming salamat. Yun lang from me today. Thank you. Ayan. Again, thank you very much to our speaker this morning, Sir Ray Torres. Our guest, Ma'am Nali, and our Cash Educational Unit Head, Sir Joel Serrano. And I think... Hindi pa, di, di, hindi pa natapos ang ating araw on this particular session because later this afternoon at 3 p.m., we'll be having another webinar with Engineer JD. Uh, yan, medyo maganda rin yan. And iba na naman ang ataking gagawin ni Sir JD sa atin mamayang hapon. And again, thank you Sir Ray, Ma'am Nari, and Sir Joel Serrano. 
Ayan, that concludes our uh, Casio webinar session this morning. And to get to know more about Casio Calculators, you can visit their Facebook page, Casio Calculators Philippines. And to download all the emulators and other softwares na pwede nating magamit, pwede kayo mag, ma, pumunta sa kanilang site. It's edu.casio.com. And then you will see a lot of emulators na pwede nyo i-download for free. And magagamit natin siya in delivering distance learning to our students. And tulad na sinabi ko, this will not be the last. Later on, we'll be having another session with Engineer JD and hopefully uh, you will join us again sa ating afternoon session. And again, tulad na sinasabi ko, nagsimula na ang klase, tuloy-tuloy na tayong mga teachers sa ating sinubang itong kulin na magbigay ng quality education to our learners. And as part of the Department of Education, let us heal as one, let us work as one, let us teach as one, dahil sama-sama tayo sa pagsulong ng edukalidad sa ating bansa. Muli, my name is Mr. Salvador Malansala, and kita-kits po tayo mamaya sa ating afternoon session with Engineer J.D.